Okay, well, good morning. My name's Bob Parnell, P-A-R-N-E-L-L, -L, and I'm the chief of the Salisbury Fire Department. And uh, as uh, you know, we had a very serious fire at the Grimes Mill. Uh, the address is 600 North Church Street here in Salisbury, uh, as it stands behind me as, as you see it today. Uh, the fire was called in and uh, we were dispatched around 9.45 p.m. last night. Uh, our crews, uh, while en route, received several communications that the fire was already uh, well advanced inside the building. In fact, the 911 center, which sets a couple blocks away, told us en route over the radio that they could see the flames even uh, before we arrived. So our first crews arrived just moments after dispatch and uh, the fire was well involved uh, inside uh, Grimes Mill. Our crews never made an attempt to go inside. It was as much uh, too hazardous in regards to the amount of fire that they found. I can tell you that within minutes of their arrival, the building was 100% involved. And by that, I mean that it was burning from top to bottom, side to side, left to right, back to front. And uh, we uh, activated a defensive posture, a defensive mode of operation, meaning all of our water into the fire was played uh, from the outside using ground mounted and aerial mounted uh, ladder devices, uh, master stream devices. At one point we think we were probably flowing about six or 7,000 gallons a minute into the, into the fire. Um, unfortunately, sadly, the, the Grimes Mill is a total loss as you can see, uh, and we are certainly uh, sorry to have uh, lost such a uh, iconic history mark in our, in our city. Uh, so uh, there are no injuries to firefighters, and there are no, no injuries to civilians. Um, we, we, we pulled this thing under control within three hours uh, and uh, we will be here uh, for the, the duration putting out hot spots. The investigation has started. Uh, our fire marshal was on the scene last night. Preliminary uh, investigation then started. Uh, although the team uh, pulled together to investigate this com comprises not only of the city fire marshal, city of Salisbury fire marshal, but also the city police department uh, and SBI. And ATF has offered their help and they are also on the scene. They gathered around 9.15 this morning to start the physical investigation. They're on site uh, making pictures and measurements and getting a grasp of uh, the actual, actual uh, site. The cause is nowhere near uh, determinable at this point. And uh, uh, so I have no statement regarding the cause of the fire. Can I answer any questions? Uh, the weather today and the forecasted weather tonight with the uh, possible snow in the area certainly will uh, hinder or at least slow down the actual ec outside activities of investigating. The bigger thing that's going to hinder us though is the stability of the building. As you can see the center core of the building is, is still standing but very precariously. Uh, it is the, the grain bin part of the building which is built on uh, heavy timber mill-like construction uh, with uh, metal, uh, metal wrapping the bin and it, you can see it's quite large and it's very compri uh, compromised by the fire itself. We can't get near it, we can't get under it. We have tried to put it out multiple times but because of the debris that's fallen around that core, the metal debris, we can't get to the seat of the fire. So if we extinguish the top, the bottom still burns and lights the top off again. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a fight for us for, who knows, a day or two uh, till we can get that grain bin section center of the building taken care of. We're also concerned about the walls, the stability of the brick walls. Our collapse zone is extended and protracted. So uh, we're, we're, we're concerned about that as well. So the actual physical getting in will not be done uh, until it, it's clear and safe. So you guys have not been able to get inside this building at all since it started in that's absolutely correct. There's been nobody, uh, as far as a responder, to enter that building as, as for the fire fight. So that'll take about two days before you can even consider trying to. I, I think that's very uh, uh, conservative. It, it may take much longer than that. It, it's possible a couple days, but the weather will hinder us, and and the safety of our responders and investigators is utmost and uh, a prime primary concern for us. So we'll wait till it's safe till we can get in there. You know, I, I think that that's a better question for the Historic Foundation. Uh, our firefighters were in the building within the past 24 months, pre-planning and touring. 
but unfortunately, I, I don't, I can't classify exactly what was in it at this time. It was historic type items in those. Can you talk a little bit about how the, the historic nature of the building and how that may have contributed to? Sorry. How, how quickly the fire may have spread. I mean, you have an older structure, a lot of wood, a timber, as you said. I mean, did that help possibly accelerate how quickly it went on? Well. So the building is a, a built in the 1890s, and it was built to code in 1890, which means it doesn't have modern fire stopping, uh, modern codes fire stopping. So uh, when a fire takes hold of a building of this nature, of this historic uh, construction, it, it moves. The fire progressed quite rapidly because there are no modern uh, fire stopping uh, building construction features in there. So as far as what's going on now, I would say from what it looks like, and you can just correct me on the, on the proper terminology, it looks like you're letting it burn itself out. Is that the right, right way to phrase it? Well, no, I, I don't think we're letting it burn. What, what, we're, what we've done is we've, we've extinguished the center core from what, what we can see by the eye from this point uh, several times. But because we can't get to the base because of the debris that's fallen in around the base, it continues to burn. So if we extinguish the top, the, the base of it will continue to burn up as fire burns up all the time. And, and uh, hence it looks like um, uh, it's gotten well uh, uh, precarious in its stability. So we're not gonna be able to get close. We're not gonna be able to get to the base. We, uh, we're to the point where if we hit it with a master stream now, we're gonna pu push it apart. And, and, and uh, um, so we are, we're, we are periodically going to hit that fire, but it's gonna it's gonna be a, a protracted time frame. How big of a fire is this? And is this, is this on the scale of Web Road? But, uh, in terms of the city's history, how significant is this? Fire? Well, I I think as far as the city's history of fires, this is this is this was quite a amazing sight last night in regards to a 100% involved. Uh, four-story with a Mansert construction historic building. It's it's certainly a sad fire in far as far as our city's history. Um, it, it's it's in the top ten of of uh, fire volume, if you will, as a firefighter might say, uh, in, in a in a career. Let's put it that way. Is it frustrating to be fighting a fire for 14 hours and have it still be burning behind you? Uh, I don't think frustration is is the problem. In fact, we're very happy with. Um, uh, the, the response that we got, our off-duty firefighters came back uh, in, in droves to help put out this fire, and our mutual aid was outstanding. There, there was uh, uh, firefighters here from Kannapolis, as we called them special, uh, in uh, uh, Cleveland. Uh, many Rowan County-based firefighter fire departments came in to, to help us, as is our uh, mutual aid protocol. Uh, and, and unfortunately, with a building this size and a fire of this magnitude, we expect a long duration, so it's it's uh, what we are. Can you say how many firefighters were on scene? Um, like at the height of the fire, we 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 uh, estimate to be 125 firefighters on the scene. And what about the ATF coming in? Is that fairly common procedure for a fire this big? Um, yeah, uh, ATF helps with commercial-based uh, fires, and and this building qualifies for that. And so uh, when they call to offer. Um, we certainly took them up on it. So it, there's there's nothing of any uh, 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 there's nothing strange about that. Same with SBI, I guess. SBI we called uh, uh, because of the the size of the building and the the, the type of occupancy. Well, I think that the steady stream of rain would help you guys out a bit, but you say it's just... <laughs> the the rain the rain cannot get to the seat of the fire much like we can't get to the seat of fire with our hose stream. So. Uh, it's just, it's just going to take some time to, to uh, get to it. When was the building last checked? Uh, I, don't, I don't have the uh, last uh, inspection, but I do know that our inspections are up to date, so uh, uh, I don't have that date. I'm sorry. you know when the last time it was secured, though? Is there like a daily check at all? Or when was the last time? Do you know when the last time something was in the building? Oh, I understand that the building was occupied yesterday. I understand that the... Uh, proprietors of the building or the people that uh, work inside the building on a volunteer basis were in it yesterday. It's, it's, it's not a vacant building. It is a, is a working uh, a historic site. And, uh, 
Anything, Stay with them. Anyone doing anything involving heat or fire yesterday? Well, uh, our, our investigators will, will have to uh, determine and make a statement about that. I, I have no uh, statement about that at this time. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Y'all stay dry and warm. I'm going to step here.